All right. Welcome to the Cult of Personality podcast, episode whatever. Uh, I'm your host, Mikey McChoppa, per usual. And today with me is Messi Santana, aka Little Messi, aka Free Messi. I've done a little bit of research. I found aliases of sorts. But uh, how's it going today, man? Shit, bro, you know, the usual. <laughs> Maintaining and staying out the way, fresh home, messy free. <laughs> Yes, sir. Messi is free. Depression EP, you know, tune into that. That's coming soon. I oh, just yeah. dropped a call today, too, called right. Beam. So go I check g- that. I gave that a listen. That was cool. Yeah. You liked it? Yeah, it was dope. I was dope. I've been I checked out, I checked out a bit of your discography before beforehand to, you know, so I'm up, I'm yeah. in the loop. Yeah. Very good stuff. Yes. Damn right, bro. Most of my prior guests have been like more, uh, I guess, like alternative artists of sorts. So yeah. you're more so like our first, like, uh, I guess, what would you, what would you describe yourself as? I'd say more like, you know, like a rapper rather than like a, uh, yeah. like a singer. It's yeah, it's, it's like a, uh, it's a, it's a different, if it's a different style, it's like a, a dark trap type shit. Like it's, right. a, it's a different vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I feel you. This dark track, you know. So, oh, I think we lost a bit of camera connection. I don't know if, uh, okay, no, we're good. There it is. Uh, what was I gonna say? No, I'm very intrigued when you uh first inquired about this episode because I um I've known you prior mainly from uh the Tracy track about you before uh yeah before you had came home and so when you hit me up I was like oh shit this is really cool this is really dope <laughs> so I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, a little bit of that but you know mostly this is about you this isn't about yeah. Tracy or anything it's sort we'll touch on it a bit but also like you know uh, you've been gone for five years I'm right something like that yeah, right. yeah so we'll get into all that um but our first question we have our little like structure here so we have our first question and shit like that which our first question is Messi Santana the name the image the aura and the energy where did it come from how did we get here and everything in between, kind of like your whole story and what brought you to this point. All right, so look, so you, you know, Messi, Messi, of course, came from the soccer player. You know, initially, like, initially, I used to spell it M E S S I, yeah, from Lionel Messi. You know, and uh, when Tracy did the song, he did M E S S Y. So yeah, I ended up changing it based off of how he had put it out. You know, because we had spoke while I was locked up. It was like, damn. He, I'm like, yo, I tell him, because I got mad at him. Not really mad, but it was on some shit. I'm like, damn, bro. God damn, you ain't never shout me out or nothing. And God damn, like, we close as hell. Like, you my brother. You never shouted me out. Like, what the fuck? So the whole time, he like, bro, I got you. Chill. But I didn't know he was going to make a whole song about me. Yeah. So that shit shocked the shit out of me. Like, when I got on the phone and everybody telling me, like, yo, Tracy just made a song about you and shit. So I'm like, for real? So I'm thinking, like, he just shouted me out. So they like, nah, it's a whole song called Messy. So I'm like, what? So the whole time, though, it's spelled M-E-S-S-Y. So <laughs> I'm like, damn. So I'm like, I'm First probably- time you shouted me out and you misspelled this shit? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I wasn't tripping because I was like, maybe it, it was a sign, you know, how the universe is. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to just change it. So... Then as well, like, while I was locked up, people was telling me, like, yo, you know, it's an artist out named Lil Messi, this and that. So I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, man, I'm the first Lil Messi. Like, what are you talking about? So the Santana part came on from, you know, R.P. Ace, man, my my best friend. He got killed, you know, back in 2016. Oh, so, man. Yeah, we used to call him Ace Santana. So I just had took took the Santana part on and called it Messi Santana, you know, so. That's where that came from, the whole Messi Santana wave. That's, so, d- that's dope. I mean, in a, that's a dope tribute, too, because in an aspect, he lives through you in that sense, or at least like yeah. your musical journey and stuff. Yeah, so it's like he he never died, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, that's like that's like that alter ego, you know? Yeah. That Messi Santana. So it's like a, a mixture of me and him, like some Dragon Ball Z shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a fusion or something. <laughs> it's like a fusion. <laughs> 
but that's um that's what's up and the cool thing with that track with that messy track is he put it on his album too i think designer talk too whichever yeah. so it's not like it's like a one-off single like it's pretty immortalized in his discography motherfuckers know who messy is i was uh doing like my research and there's like whole reddit forums like do you guys know who messy is like <laughs> like yeah it's tracy's friend i was like fuck yeah damn right no yeah but that's dope i'm assuming you come from uh virginia right yeah, so so you know a lot a lot of my, a lot of my family is from New York though Brooklyn, you know. All right. Here, so when we moved out here, like this is where I really grew up at. This is where I was born at. But like I go back and forth from Jersey, New York, you know, and uh, well Richmond, Virginia. But I'm primarily out here for for right now. But like yeah. we're from New York. That's what's up. Conveniently enough, I'm repping the state. I'm from New York. I'm from the Bronx. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. No, man, that's yeah. pretty dope. I'm uh that's dope that you have those New York roots because you know it's one of the yeah. it's a cool state. It's what's up. It's expensive, <laughs> but it's what's up. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that's really uh that's really cool. Um I was gonna ask, like, but is there any significant parts of that upbringing, either in New York or Virginia, that play heavy into like you know your whole discography and your music and stuff? Like a lot of when I grew up. A lot of the music I listened to was like I was influenced by Max B, you know, Bass God, uh, Young Thug, of course. Like that's one of my favorite rappers. You know, Tracy, of course, put me on a lot of music when we was growing up. You know, right. different shit. So it was it was it was a cool little you know just a mixture of everything. Like I had. I had a lot of different mixtures of music. And then like my grandfather used to play like heavy metal and shit like that. So like it's it's just a a mixture of different different genres, you know? So that's where that's that's why I'm so versatile. Like you might hear me sing one time and then next thing you know I'm rapping and it's like, God damn, you got so many different you versions. keep it you keep it versatile. Yeah. So that's where that versatility comes from, from just doing this, listening to that song, that song. And then I'll just be like, damn, I want to try some shit like this. And then I just do it my own way, you know? Yes, sir. That's very, that's very, I'm very happy that you named artists like that because um, I don't know if you keep up with the podcast or if you haven't, you can always check back on the, uh, older episodes, but a lot of people named a lot more uh, like of the now, like SoundCloud artists, but yeah. I fuck I fuck with Max B. I fuck with Young Thug. I fuck with all that. So it's like it's cool that you mentioned those guys like different, <laughs> a different side that we're mentioning when it comes to inspirations or uh, you know, just what we listen to and shit like that. So that's really cool. And yeah. I, can, I can see how it plays into like, you know, your discography and like what you do and stuff like that. Also Damn. cool that you had like that uh heavy metal from like your grandfather, which is cool. Yeah, he lit shit, man. Rest in peace, man. He he listened to fucking heavy metal country jazz like it was never it was never a dull moment with the music so it's like like he got cowboy boots and everything shit's crazy <laughs> that's dope i'm fucking i feel i feel you i fuck with country music especially like that johnny cash and shit like that willie yeah. nelson <laughs> up my alley no oh, yeah that's really fucking that's really cool man um and i'm glad that it plays heavy into your music because some people you know they have whatever versatile fucking music taste but they won't let it affect what they make they'll keep it you know, whatever fucking lines they have for themselves or shit like that. Yeah. But very cool. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't have expected that. Damn right, bro. Learning yeah. more about Messi Santana. <laughs> it's a whole lot, you know, just keep asking. <laughs> yes, sir. But um, usually our second question, which, I mean, we kind of touched on slightly, but our second question usually here is uh, musical inspirations for our artists. So I just want to know if we go more in depth about, you know, Music, other musicians that you know help with what you make today and how you carry yourself as an artist and shit like that if we haven't named all of it already yeah uh i mean like i said a lot a lot of a lot of my musical inspirations and everything comes from like the max you know uh like the trapping and shit that came that came from max you know uh and like the, just just being me and understanding who I am came from Tracy, you know, just really understanding and being like, damn, all right, I could be myself, 
you know? Right. And that that came that came from Big Bro. Like he taught he taught me a lot about just being yourself, you know, and just understanding like, yo, this is this is who you are. Like, don't be anybody else. But like one thing about him, which I respected, like he never he never like said it. Like he just lived it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of a lot of times, you know, you just learn from watching. Well, that's how I learned, you know. Right. So I understood what he was doing. And I was like, he's just being himself, you know. So that that played a big inspiration on Messi Santana himself, you know. So it's like that's that's what it comes from, for real. Like everything, everything as far as through how I grew up was a lot Tracy had a lot of that like that that's that's my brother between him and Ace Santana you know so Messi and everything <laughs> it came from them like without them it wouldn't have been a Messi Santana you know so that's that's what it comes from yeah man that's awesome you know especially because you know you give them where it's due like give them the credit where it's due um yeah, yeah I, I I fuck with that heavy especially because I believe like definitely actions speak louder than their words so seeing like you know rather than him like saying like oh yeah you know this is how you should be or whatever him just living it and then it helping you you know find that same i guess like moral code of sorts or just way of carrying yourself is obviously very fucking cool and very organic yeah damn With, right and uh you know it brought us here today that's very dope and uh, you know it's cool that we mentioned this only for the sake of like my main demographic here. A lot of people probably look up to Tracy in a sort, which is, it's just convenient. Yeah. It's just convenient how, you know, the world works and you know him and it fucking, it's just more insight and shit on stuff like that. But besides that more on you, but yeah, very cool for mentioning that. And also like, I think it's something uh, that people can carry uh, anyone. It's applicable to anyone outside of music, you know, just being you and not living within like any uh, restraints. Yeah. Damn right. Damn right. Very, very cool. No, yeah. Um, what was I gonna mention now? This is very this is unscripted, uncensored. So sometimes I'm kind of like running in loops and shit like that, <laughs> but I keep it, I keep it fairly uh linear. But um well, you from what I understand, you were gone for five years. I don't know how heavy you want to touch on that, but uh if we can if we can touch on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, now nah, we uh I got, I got hemmed up on a on a robbery charge. You know, a lot of like like late night nigga, we trapping that late night track I just dropped. It yeah, speaks, it touches bases yeah. on certain certain shit that I I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like when I said I just left the pen. You know, 1800 days I was down bad on my dick. Rob a plug, just say I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, like if you listen, a lot of Every everything I put out, you know, even from my old shit. Like if you go listen to my old shit on SoundCloud, it's that's what I was doing. Like you could hear, you could hear from from the Molly, you know, all, yeah. all the drugs like that took over. Like it was, I, it's I all was all reflective. Yeah, and at, I would I was wilding, you know. So I <laughs> keep it keep it honest, happened, keep it frank. Yeah. As far as what happened, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm thankful for real, bro. I, I could have, I could have been gone a long, a long, long fucking time, and like, I came off, you know, them lawyer fees, all of that shit, like, that played, that played a big part in everything. The lawyer fees, you know, um, the support that I had, the support system that I had, that played a big part too. You know, when I went to court and shit and then, you know, they sentenced me. They they actually hit me. It's crazy because the judge hit me. He like, yo, uh, I'm gonna sentence you to 38 years. So Ooh. you know, when he when he sent sentences me to 38 years, I don't hear nothing else. I'm just like, damn, this shit over with. So I'm like, fuck it. It is what it is. So I, I had accepted that for a minute. I thought I was just I had 30 years, you know, and I ended up speaking to my lawyer. My lawyer was like, nah, you got time suspended. Like, he gave you 38, but you got that suspended. They just gave you the mandatory time for the firearms. So I was like, word, what's that? So he like, five years. So I'm like, damn. By the time I had already got my time, I was gone for like two and a half years. So I was like, that shit's nothing. So I sat down 
and through the whole process, like I just had, I had support through through my moms, you know, Tracy, of course, you know, and uh, that's pretty much through Tracy, my moms, bro. And like, I can't really think of so many cause so many friends fell off. Like everybody ain't your homie. Matter of fact, my big homie, Fat Cat, you know, I miss that nigga, man. And Gusto, but Gusto gone. You know, I speak, I speak about them a lot. You know, through the music, you you peep it out. You right. know, uh, I got this other cat, other track coming out called Free Fat Cat. You know, that's coming soon too. So I'm gonna drop that, and then I'm gonna just work on this depression album. But a lot of times, every every other bond that I built, as far as like my cartel label and everything. That came through just being incarcerated around people I've been around. So like that was my whole experience of being locked up though, it, it changed my perspective on on a lot of things, you know, especially my music. Cause right. like I used to fuck around and uh do the auto-tuning and shit with my music, <laughs> like while I'm locked up, like I'm harmonizing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I'm in there, I'm like, I fell out of love with demons. But I'm I'm like, yo, it's gonna sound like this when I do the auto-tune. And it's it's just a lot of different shit, you know. But yeah, I was I was gone for five years. They gave me 38 years, suspended it. So that's where I am now, you know. God is good. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, most I could I can only imagine it's so much time, you know, uh to reflect, I guess, you know, rather than like being occupied with the day to day, I guess, like, you know, out and about whatever, whatever people are up yeah. to in their lives. So it gave you I feel like it's good that I mean, making making good out of a shitty situation, it gives you time to focus on like your craft and where you know, and now that you're, you're here, and we have messy Santana free messy messy free. Uh, me just being stupid. But um, now I feel like maybe you're even more focused on the music and like, your direction with that maybe i'm wrong yeah. that's just me assuming yeah you know the mute the music now like i'm 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 so focused now like that's that's all i do like i just grind studio you know setting up videos uh got a video shoot coming soon too so that's in the process that's like we're gonna do that like next month for uh late night trapping that's that's gonna be coming out soon so be be ready for that you know um and like I said, depression EP, I'm dropping that too. So it's a lot, it's a lot of a lot of stuff in the mix. You know, me and Tracy got the collabs coming out. So that's, that's what's it's, up. It's just all over for real, bro. I'm just it's all over with the music. Like that's all I'm grinding, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, and I uh, I'm highly anticipating all that. And it's cool. I get I follow you, so I stay updated because I um with these things like with the podcast, I plug every I plug people's shit in, like uh, I guess in the description or wherever I can. So like yeah. as you as you upload more, because I don't, I was gonna ask, are you only on SoundCloud or yeah, like right now I'm in the process because you know, initially I just I just got uh I own all my music now with the Mac. I I'm you know, I got I got a copywritten. At first, none of my music was copywritten. So at the time, that's all I was going on with SoundCloud because I didn't really I didn't have nobody no manager or anybody backing me up or learning, you know, learning the whole thing. So I was teaching myself pretty much. So okay. I was just dropping on SoundCloud, but uh, I should like United Masters, I know was supposed to release my music in like 10 days, but I had already posted on Instagram. It was dropping tonight, you know, yeah. late back when I had first posted it. So I'm like, yo, it's dropping tonight at 12. So once I put it on United Masters, it was like, you got 10 days. I'm like, shit. I'm yeah. like, like I I'm, I got to use SoundCloud, so I use I had used SoundCloud and uh, Audius. I don't know if you ever heard of Audius, but I have not. It was some it was something. I guess you get your royalties. You can make your royalties off of it. So I had I had used Audius and uh, uploaded it on Audius. So it's on Audius and SoundCloud right now. But United Masters should be dropping it in like three four four more days, and then it'll be on SoundCloud, whatever platforms is through United Masters. Yeah. You know? Uh, with United Masters, I've tried using it. I know that they're a little tricky with like timing and shit. Uh, I switched over, like personally, just me talking, like, because I, I make music and shit and I drop shit. I yeah. uh, sw I switched over to DistroKid, which is like I think twenty dollars a year. Okay. Which is it's you know it's all right, and it puts it on fucking Spotify, Apple Music, and all that shit. Yeah. But it puts it like as long as you release it like in advance, it'll put it like on the day that you set it for. Because I I don't know, I tried United Masters and like it'd be like shaky. I'd put it for a day. And be like, oh no, your cover art's not right. We're gonna delay it. Like, 
shit like that. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, man. But that's that's pretty much what it what it is right now, you know. Uh a SoundCloud, you know, I'm a I'm a SoundCloud artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we all we all started there. I feel like everyone started on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. SoundCloud is the birth of the birth of legends. <laughs> Very much so. I feel like it's a birthplace of like the fucking second renaissance with how much fucking art we got out of it that, you know, yeah. succeed. So it's very fucking dope. And it's cool. Um, let's say, huh? Hot as shit over here for once. 70 degrees in New York for once. <laughs> terrible, 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 terrible. No, yeah, but um, that's really cool. And the hopeful thing with all that, especially like talking about SoundCloud is, you know, hoping to succeed all of us but you have a really dope story behind you and coming from fucking what you've been through to now it's like there's no other way you know you only going up type shit yeah. i feel like so i definitely see success you on the incline which is very good um we're gonna talk about i like to ask about future endeavors so i'm glad that you brought up a, uh, a music video for late night trapping which i gave that a listen and i, I was gonna mention demons we'll, uh, we'll touch on that later but yeah. um for the music video for Late Night Trapping, that's really cool. Uh, is that just like an idea right now, or we got shit like, uh, like concepts and shit that's set right. up? <laughs> that's in the that's in the that's in the works. <laughs> very very cool. Right now, like at, as of today, we just uh, we we right now um, we picking a location. I'm I'm probably be out Charlotte, either Charlotte or uh, Baltimore. You know, all right. Um, probably in new york too just all over we just uh getting all the scenes where we gonna shoot at you know straight right now but that's that's coming out <laughs> anticipating <laughs> you know, that, that yeah that's that's next month <laughs> yeah next, so it'll be out next month i'm i'm heavy on visuals i fuck with visuals heavy like music videos and shit like that i was um i had filmed the episode yesterday which god knows when that will release but i uh i was talking about like my love for just fucking visuals and shit. Why is that shit on? Eh, whatever. My love for just like visuals and music videos and shit like that. So when you mentioned that, my ears like perked up. Like, oh shit, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, that leads me to ask about like, you know, because that's for late night trapping. Do you plan on definitely like expanding on music videos when it comes to like other like future drops? Like even if it's the uh, EP you mentioned or Demons or something like that. Yeah. See what the uh with I might I. See, you know, it's crazy. Like Demons was one of those songs when I when I when I just dropped it, like I really I really didn't want to drop it, but I dropped it because it was like I it, it was just I Demons, I wasn't really feeling it for real. Like I was cause it was it was emotional to me, you know, right. it was it was too emotional to me. But it it was true story, you know, but it was facts, but it's just like it would <laughs> it just touched me, you know, and it yeah. was like I want to keep this, but I went and dropped it anyways. I was, I, I told my people, I said, man, go ahead and drop it, whatever. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I let them drop it, you know. I, f and, um, I, I feel you. Ahead. Yeah. Why is this shit making noise? Oh, well. Um, I feel you for the sake of like, it's a double edged sword with vulnerable music because like, uh, when music like that, it pulls like a, uh, it pulls something out of people, like listeners, like it, it, it resonates with people. It hits like a heart string of sorts. But for the artists, I feel like some people aren't comfortable being too vulnerable, like on that level, like yeah. putting it out there. But uh, it's definitely admirable that you still went through and put it out, despite, you know, feeling like, yo, this is like really close to me and shit like that. Yeah, see, it's, I, I wanted to drop, it was another song I wanted to drop, you know, uh, a, called Love Is Hard. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't drop it because like it 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 still it still needed to be worked on a little bit like at least I felt so but like the listeners that was there they were like uh they were like yo drop it drop it and I'm like nah man it's just chill like it's not how I want it you know right. I wanted more to it but like the love is hard track it's it's a single I'm not gonna put it on the EP so it might come out it might not I don't know depending on how I'm feeling about it you might never hear it <laughs> But <laughs> it might just be some lore. Like we talked about it and it's mystery. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of those mystery, mystery songs. Like, I don't know. It depends how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, that's good that you even though because people are always gonna be like, Yeah, it's good enough because they're not like the artist. They don't see the vision. They're just like, Yeah, I, I they're listening to it and they're like, it's good. 
but it's yeah. like we we know what it needs like what it needs to be what we want it to be and shit like that so for you to stick to your vision is dope and hopefully yeah. hopefully we get it hopefully we get it but you might i mean it, it depends man <laughs> but if we like, don't we don't it's a snippet actually of like me me doing the actual freestyle because i had freestyled it initially before I recorded it, right? Like I was in the I was in an Uber <laughs> and uh it's on it's on um it's on my business partner's page, man. Uh 662 Cartel Life. It's on his page. And it's it's like a video of me in the back of the Uber, man, nappy braids and all like <laughs> it's like uh Convicted felon, I still go back to prison. I'm in accounting Bentley. Still got jury from some robberies I hit when I was little. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but it's a the whole time, the whole time, man, it's it's really, it's really like, I don't know. I, I don't like it for real. I do, but I don't. Like it's one of it's one of those things, you know, you might get. Might. But if not, I mean, it lives on through that sniffing, especially now you plug it in. People who are interested, y'all can go find it. But um, yeah. no, yeah, it's, I mean, we all have tracks like that too. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of artists I know who have fucking like tracks that will never see the light of day that they have and shit like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, the cool thing with that is I like you know, yo, I might, I might just just call you like, yo, check this shit out. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking the cool thing with that, like, yeah, no, uh, the thing is, too, artists, like, you know, we compensate for that if there's music that, you know, we're like, oh, that's cool, and then evolve it. It's like we end up creating more and making up for that. So it is what it is. But hopefully, here's to hoping. But, um, no, yeah, so that's cool. You know, I'm glad that we mentioned that. But I wanted to mention, too, is because you mentioned a uh, EP of sorts, and I don't know how much you want to necessarily touch on it because, you know, people like to be kind of confidential with things like that, like future projects, but what would you like to people to know of it so far? How far is it coming with, with like in the works? Uh, what well, as far as the EP, like how, how, how far is it to be yeah. finished? Yeah. Uh, see the date, see I'm debating for real how many tracks I want to put on it, but it's already in the process. Cause like, I got so much material recorded already. So like, I, I literally, I probably hit the studio like almost damn near every other day, you know? So I'm always recording, but it's, it's really what I want to put on it. Depression is, is pretty much everything I went through, you know, like the act, like the definition to depression is the act of feeling like Messi Santana, you know, like <laughs> that's, that's what's going on, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's how the whole depression album is going to give you a list of everything like really who I am you know like what I've been through and everybody that got killed you know every, everybody around me that that got killed and all of that you know so it's you get a you get an understanding of who Messi Santana is through the depression album and all the pain well not even album but the EP I might make it an album though too you know Hey, talk on the project to talk about how personable it was, especially, you know, everything you've been through recently. And, you know, that's just a human experience. We all go through our shit. And then some way we document it. People, poets do poetry, musicians do music, fucking people do movies, you know, however it goes. So very cool. And I'm very excited to actually like hear that and have that, hear that insight of everything. Yeah. You know, um, that the. Like I said, depression, you know, it's it's everything for real. So it it, it speaks a, about like my whole experience locked up for real. You know? Yeah. It, it was it was a a depressive state I was in, like when I was locked up. Like I didn't really I lost everything for real, you know? And like I said, uh, it was it was only like three people that was there the whole time, three, four people. You know, and then of course the other friendships that I made while I was locked up, but like shit, bro. That that shit was that shit was tough. <laughs> yeah. You know? It was like it was different. It was different, man. It was different. I could definitely like only I can only talk from an assuming standpoint, you know, I've never been there, but 
Um, looking from the outside in, I can only imagine how reevaluating it is of everything, like friends, fucking life in general, priorities, shit like that, you know, like kind of like a, um, and also again, like it's very much a like reflective time. So with all that being said, all that time, like kind of like almost in your head even, and definitely vulnerable to become like depressed in a sense, um, feeling all those deep, heavy emotions. It's like, you have to let it out somehow, you know, I feel like yeah. at least. A lot, it's it's gonna be a lot of like, it's gonna be a lot of a lot of singing up there. I tell you that a lot of singing, a lot of a lot of, it's gonna be a mixture of singing and rage, you know, because that's yeah. that's going on, a lot of pain and a lot of anger. So, it's just it's just depression. That's why, you know, like I define it as the act of feeling like Messi Santana, you know, right, <laughs> which. Number one is a great fucking selling like slogan for the album. It's like depression yeah. is to feel like my, that's a fucking dope fucking one liner you got. But no, yeah, and that's very fucking cool. And what I want to ask is um, when it comes to that project, uh, do you plan on expanding on it when it comes to things like, again, we mentioned like music videos or even like on a bigger level, would you ever do like merch or shit like that? Or even in general, yeah. it doesn't have to be to the album, but as a musician in general. Yeah, it's 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 gonna. I I was thinking about um doing some merch for it. I was thinking it's 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 gonna be some videos guaranteed. You don't gotta even. It's gonna be a lot of visuals, <laughs> a lot of visuals. Like the the main visuals though that I'm focused on right now is late night trapping. You know, yeah. but as far as the rest of those, like once late night trapping comes out, you <laughs> you really get an understanding of like the environment and. <laughs> and who Messi is like everything is gonna tell you who Messi Santana is you know that I put out like at the end of the day anything I ever rapped about or sung about has never been a lie you know so like it's it's all facts you right know? which I can appreciate that within an artist authenticity yeah. that's that's like that's like one of the biggest things that like I used to focus on when I write music you know or like if I'm freestyling and I might freestyle and say some shit and I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't say that. Hell no, nah. take that off because it's not true. You right. know, so it's like, hell no. Nah. That's, I just, I'm big on being real. I'm big on loyalty too, you know? Right. Which is a, um, it's good more, it's good more around to have in my opinion. I guess maybe not everyone will agree because some people be capping the fuck out in their music, but like, uh, personally, I like being, like, honest in my shit, and I like listening to music I feel like come from a place of honesty, so for you to mention that everything you said is is the truth within your music is, like, fucking dope. I admire that, and I'm glad we mentioned it, and also because, like, I feel like, at least, like, with the, like, I guess I know my demographic of, like, the podcast and shit, and, like, the people who, like, listen, and a lot of them, I feel, can agree with that, so it's something that resonates, you know? Yeah. Which is dope. But um, I was going to ask, like, differences. I wanted to ask about, like, because, you know, there was a, from what I noticed, it's like a fucking, the last thing you put before Late Night Trapping or before the come up, I think. I have your discography up here, so I'm looking. Um, there was, like, a five-year period, I'm assuming, for obvious reasons. And what I wanted to obviously ask is, like, you know, is there, which I assume there is, like, a difference between, like, the music we're going to, we're expecting now and we're getting now compared to, I'm assuming it was a project I think you uh, put out in 2017. Oh, um, which 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 project you talking about? Uh, I only have like a limited screenshot here, but it's um, it was the one with like a, I think it's free. It's no, it's not called Free Messy, but I think the it love, has love a, scar. Let me see. I think it's Young Hustle Chronicles Volume One. Oh yeah, Young Hustlers Chronicles. Yeah, see. See that was that was like they did that when I was locked up, you know. They had uh, a lot like the team that I had behind me at the time. They had just combined all my songs together and and put it out there, you know. And just was like, uh, we just call it Young Hustlers Chronicles. I was like, fuck it, you know, because at the time I, at the time I didn't even care about you know doing music anymore. It was like, well, fuck it, man. I'm about to do this time like it is what it is yeah so it was like yo we reposting this shit we 
I'm like, fuck it, I, you know, but they had called it Young Hustlers Chronicles. A lot of those songs was uh, me and my little brother, you know, Gusto, you know, he's locked up right now. He got like eight years left, but when I like three, I take that back. He got eight, but he got three, you know, so he'll be home soon. You'll see him with me, you know. <laughs> can't but, wait on that and is he not to cut you off but is he like also planning on continuing music when he comes when he comes home yeah yeah um he we did I think yeah that, yeah. That just, yeah he's uh he he every time he calls me you'll hear some snippets of him I, you're gonna hear a lot of them too <laughs> Dope. I, i'm not gonna speak too much on him because i don't know how much he want you know yeah want to press but uh you know yeah he'll be he'll be there he'll be there. highly anticipating that no yeah i figured it's definitely because i was like that was the project that i listened to i think i listened to most of it if not through it fully and so and then i listened to like the newer stuff you have and i listened to late night and i listened to demons today i listened to i try to keep dated because with with my artists like that i have on here and stuff like that it's like i really try to like get familiar with their work because i don't want to sit here clueless like oh yeah. Make, you know i was like i like to so i've been listening to all of that and so that project i listened to it fully and i was wondering i'm like hmm, like i wonder the difference of psyche obviously between then and now it's like five yeah. years is a lengthy time <laughs> you see i would like a lot of a lot of the first songs i i just recently put out but well, the first two songs i just recently put out i was trying to figure out my sound you know when i was in the studio and Cause if you listen to the old Messi, the old Messi was like a lot of har harmonious, you know, music. You know, it was it was just harmonies, just singing, and it was a lot of soft toned and you know, emotional shit. Right. So it was like the transition was more so like, all right, I've been through some shit, so right. now you know, this is what's going on. So like, I still. The new shit I got, like that's gonna be on this depression. You still gonna see a different transition. You're gonna be like, what the fuck? Like it just it just keeps rising. It's like a it's like a roller coaster, you know? <laughs> right. Just on the incline. <laughs> yeah, it's on the incline. So what what that's... what popped in my head talking about that uh change of sorts, I also wanted to ask because like you said that fucking you're finding out your sound now with these newer tracks and i wanted to ask obviously besides the fact that you know whatever life experience but also with the fact that that five-year gap music in general has changed like the sound that i guess people are not because there's a bunch of different genres but like sounds have changed you know things evolve with time and stuff so i was wondering if maybe you're re-evaluating your sound because of that time and also for the sake of just like maybe you hadn't found your sound prior but yeah. I, was just, I was just wondering. Yeah, prior 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 to it, I didn't I didn't know my sound for real. Like I was I was still trying to figure out what was best for me. You know, like it would be times I I I used to like to sing. Then it would be times where it's like, man, I want to sound a little bit gritty. Like I wanna I wanna let them hear how I'm really moving out here. You know what I'm saying? But like now. It's like I'm just me, you know, and that's what I that's what I explained. Like after after sitting back, really looking at Big Bro and like seeing how he just was him, it was like, damn, that's all I gotta do is be me. Right. So that played that played a lot in my music and me figuring out who I am. Now it's just more so like, do I wanna do I wanna use auto tune or do I do I wanna, you know, just sing or what like it's like what do i really want to give them like this is me so how do i want them to understand me right. so that's that's really like the transition now is is i found i found my sound though you know since i've been in the studio like those songs was just me getting used to hearing my voice being recorded again you know right. so if you listen to it you could tell and you'll be like damn you know you could tell the difference, but these new songs, when after I keep dropping, check check the after demons out, demons comes out. Well, demons is already out, but after the the next song after demons, you'll be like, damn, I remember he told me, 
you'd be like, damn, that shit's crazy. Right. So that's just, that's what it is, man. Like, that's it for real. No, yeah. And um, what was I going to say? I'm having like a little bit of a, uh, a brain fart right now. <laughs> no, yeah. And there's multiple aspects to this music shit too. Like not even only like, oh, do I want to sing a rap? But also like production, like the beats and shit, uh, how you want to mix it, how you, exactly how you want to sound with auto-tune and shit like that. And it's like, how much auto-tune? And because I don't know, every little thing creates a completely different vibe. You know, it's all these little like a uh, tweaks and shit that you can yeah. put into it. So I'm glad that, you know, obviously you're putting your time into it and being delicate with like, what do I want to present to the people? What reflects me? Because it's just emphasis on me, which is really cool because that's that's how you're going to get the best, like the best art, the best music, the best results. But right. um, perfect, you know, exactly. But uh, I don't know. Okay. podcast is a mess. I got a hair in my mouth, fucking time limit, shit like that. But we're good. Okay. Right. What I wanted to ask about, because uh, what I like to ask about occasionally is also like, well, it depends. It's circumstantial depending on who I ask it, but I'll ask you it. Uh, do you plan on any uh, like endeavors outside of music? Because, you know, sometimes people like to uh, start up different shit just because why not? Yeah. Uh, I'm a, uh, I've, I've been, you know, when I was when I was locked up, I studied a, I studied a little bit about stocks and uh, real estate and shit like that, you know, so, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of different things I got going on, you know? Right, yeah. I, I, it was in the cut, though, because it's like, yeah. you know, I think I noticed, and about, about the universe, when you, when you tell a lot of your plans, you know, people, people add their negative energy into it, you know, not saying that you would do anything no, like yeah. that. I'm I get saying, you. Or, as far as in general, like that's what that's what goes on, you know. So, like once the universe hears it, it's like now you get the negative energy, you know. Yeah. So, even from the listeners, you know, it's always it's it's negativity everywhere. So, like I want to keep that close so that I can accomplish that, you know. I completely understand. I um I'm I'm very same way with how I carry myself when it comes to like future plans and shit. It's like very much vague until I execute it. And then- yeah. And then yeah, I can see what I'm doing. But yeah, I get that, and that makes a lot of sense. So, very cool. I respect that. I um, fuck shit. But here we go. I got. I'll tell you, unscripted, uncensored. I literally am just like this is just like off the off the hand right here. This is me. But um, what I want to ask is uh, since we're working on a uh, you got a depression uh EP slash album whatever project may be in the works. What I want to ask is, because I usually ask this with a lot of uh, artists, is do we have a plan for, do you have like any other concepts for maybe other projects music wise uh, for the future ahead? And this is like, I'm talking like, it could be years ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> I give you this last one. I got a couple, right? But this is, this is the last one I'm going to give you, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it was inspired by uh, Young Thug too. For real, but uh, I'm gonna call it the Black Christian Great. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you know <laughs> that'll be real. Like, yeah, it'll be intense. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with it. I'm anticipating that. <laughs> yeah, it'll be real intense. You know that that'll be coming soon too. So depression, the Black Christian Great. Just look out for those. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm telling you, I fucking I plug the ship description below people could check you out and people will stay dated because you know people are constantly viewing these shits as the podcast gets bigger and also as you get bigger more people will probably check this out because you know people get curious about the artist be like oh messy santana on youtube oh shit interview yeah that's dope hopefully you know obviously people are gonna stay dated with that so that's the only reason why i ask but like oh yeah what we got going on because people are gonna be like oh shit i'm anticipating that let's i'm gonna stay on top (laughs) of that Yeah. yeah for this Next part, I mean, there's no parts. I kind of just go. But I wanted to uh, ask you if you were to insist anything you'd like to talk about about yourself, because I'm only like a questionnaire, so I can't cover everything that an artist may want to convey when it comes to these interviews. So I like to give a little bit of like freedom and like uh, control to the guest. So if there's anything about Messi Santana you'd like to disclose when it comes to either music or anything outside of it, go for it, because 
I there's covers I can't or there's corners I can't always cover, you know? Yeah, I mean the main the main thing, like I said, man, I'm just I'm grinding on this music, you know, putting in overtime. Gotta feed the family, bro. Like uh, you know, car- cartel life. That's that's what it, you know, I don't know if you've seen it in, in my bio or anything on it on the Instagram, but I'll always be screaming like KMG, this and that, or cartel life. You know, uh, you might hear it in some of the songs too. Yeah. You know, what I said, uh, you know, I'm Hoover sliding with some pie roofs, you know, <laughs> that that uh, cartel, like, you know, we, we started that, you know, so it's, it's a whole, it's a whole little thing we got going on, a whole little movement, you know, that cartel life. So it, it's like a, <laughs> like a, like a collective of sorts, just like a, yeah, it's, 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 uh, well, me, me and, uh, like I said, 662 cartel, like, you know, prime time, you know, me and him had came up with that when we was, uh, locked down together, you know, cartel and, uh, <laughs> I laugh at it all the times. Cause we, we was just sitting down one day I'm, I'm drunk, you know, drinking some dumb ass fucking toilet wine <laughs> and I'm drunk and I'm like, he like, yo, um, he's telling me about a music label and shit. And I'm like, yo, man, fucking cartel life, yo. And you, you know what? Another person I never, uh, I never spoke about. That was a big inspiration on my music too. Uh, Kevin Gates. Shout out Kevin, Kevin Gates. I fuck with some of Kevin Gates. Yeah. Kevin Gates, you know, and that's where, that's where I got the idea of that's, this shit fucked up, my bad. But gotcha. That's where I got the idea of cartel from when we were speaking. Cause you know, Kevin Gates always say BWA cartel bread when it's all that shit. So I had told him, I'm like, yo, put the do uh I said, man, cartel life. And you know, he's Damu and you know, uh I'm Hoover. So I went and I was like, Well, we could just put the K instead, man, because I'm Hoover, you know, we stand on that. You know, so uh, we did it like that, cartel life, and then we just we put it together. Like that's how that's how that's how it all came together. So like that's my business partner. You know, six six two cartel life. You know, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> now yeah, I'm glad we touched on that. Shout out all that yeah. because. So, if you hadn't mentioned, that, I would have been like, I wouldn't have questioned it any further. Just like, all right. Yeah, it's also it's also uh, like. Right now, it's um, shout out Sosa too, man. That's one of my that's one of my main like that's a that's a business partner of mine. So he he uh, does the stocks and everything for me and everything, you know, all my fi- finances and everything. So yeah. Sosa, uh, we <laughs> he had he has a a thing called the Egabis. You could check it out too. Uh, Egabis Capital Inc. That's his Instagram. You know, uh, enlightens you on a lot of motivational you know how to get money this and that you know all types of different stuff so like if you're interested in stocks whatever or just need any financial advice i know he'll give it to you you know so yeah just be feel free to ask him but yeah that's that's my financial advisor you know that's what's up. i was spending money and this and that shit i'm like man i just came home <laughs> like ah oh, shit you gotta like come up it's like fucking like a uh what is it like a nutritionist but for your wallet yeah, I'm like, I'm like, man, I gotta get these new Yeezys, yo. I just seen them, yo. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel you. That's all I'm wearing, man. Is Yeezys, like, that's all I'm wearing. Yeezy, make Yeezy rich, you know. <laughs> I feel you. Hey, uh, what's... yeah, no, I mean, it's it's smart though. In the long run, it's gonna benefit you to have a financial advisor. How many people have a financial advisor nowadays? You know, yeah. a lot of people kind of just like <laughs> run off their impulses. Yeah, I know I need it though. If not, I'd be fucked up in the game. <laughs> Man, that was so. That was so <laughs> with uh, with stocks like that, have you fucking have you fed into the whole cryptocurrency craze and like fucking yeah. and like you NFTs know, and shit? Yeah. So so speaking on that, you know, I wanted to do uh, I w- I was gonna create a Discord. I don't know too much about that, right? But yeah. You no know, uh, my my uh colleagues and stuff <laughs> was explaining it to me <laughs> like uh you know uh you should you should create a discord and that so 
you know, they're going to create a Discord and um, go. I wanted to do, like, uh, maybe create an NFT a cert of certain things as far as with my music and, like, probably make, like, 30, 40 copies and release, release them for probably, like, you know, an outrageous number that they're buying for. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if it looks good enough, it doesn't even have to look good. It could be whatever, and people will buy it because it's an NFT yeah. and they can make money off it. An outrageous amount, probably like 2500 you know, just starting out. Probably probably even more than that, you know, but I was going to do that, make make some NFTs, or initially what I was going to do is wait till, like, my fan base probably reached, like, 50, 50K, and then uh, just release some NFTs of just like uh, footage of me when I first came home, you know, like when I just walked out of prison and everything yeah. from from just all the vibes and everything, you know, so. Yeah, a loyal enough follower will definitely fucking find value in that and put some money into that. Yeah, damn right. So, you know, I've, I've, I, I, know I know a little bit about the crypto, you know. Yeah. It's all it's all like uh fucking gibberish to me. I've tried to like look into like crypto and NFTs and all that, and it's just like it gets it gets complex once you get into like all the fucking science behind it. Yeah, you know that shit is it's it's tricky, you know. But one one thing about Sosa, which I <laughs> you know, they say you can't predict the market, right? But Sosa Sosa predicts that shit. <laughs> That's why they call him Sosa, man. <laughs> you gotta meet him for real. <laughs> okay yeah man yeah man yeah. that's fucking i mean that's dope that's dope on your end too it's definitely beneficial to have someone yeah. who's, who's tapped in it's like a cheat code yeah yeah exactly it's it's, it's my cheat code fucking no yeah that's fucking cool i mean that's dope that fucking because uh a lot of people are only focused on the music but if you expand into that it's good because i think some people forget about the finances of it all and you know it sucks that we live in a world where everything runs on money, but it's the harsh reality of it all. So you got to always have some money making plan going on some shit. They said money was the root of evil, but I say I'm in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, that's how a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people would share the same sentiment about it. Again. Yeah. Damn right. You know, always chasing, but, uh, <laughs> No, yeah, that's really fucking, that's really dope. And I'm excited to see you expand on all of that, you know, just growth in general as a, as a person when it comes to everything. So that's really cool to fucking, to hear about. All right. And shout out, shout out Sosa for helping out. <laughs> Sosa. <laughs> Damn right. But, um, no, yeah, very fucking cool. What time is it? I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, yeah, you good, man. <laughs> you good. <laughs> but you should... Like a motherfucker, I'm like, shit, can I call you later? <laughs> <laughs> like 30 of them shits. <laughs> yeah, nah, I feel you. Fucking... But usually what we do towards the uh, the end of it, because I, you know, I have my little questions, even though all of this is freestyle, which is towards the end of things, I like to ask for like, or we do the wrap up, which is pretty much just like, I ask you about, here, I'll give you the whole rundown. It's like Messi Santana. What do we have going on? Or what can you tell us about an outside of music and life in general in the next day, week, month, year, decade, century, and everything above? Pretty much just anything for the future. You, you know, just give some insight into that. Just so we have things to anticipate and things to look forward to for Messi Santana. Well, you know, you know, we I got the link ups with Tracy. You know, that's big bro. So you gonna see me a lot with him, you know. Uh, I'll definitely be at one of the shows. I'm not gonna say which one, but I'll be at one of them. So the yeah, he just announced that right for the summer almost. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be at one of the shows, you know. So you'll definitely get to catch up with me. And uh, like I said, you know, Depression EP, the Black Christian Gray. I'm not telling you when uh, the Black Christian Gray is coming out, but <laughs> Depression will be soon. The video, uh, late night trapping, that's definitely in the works. Like I said, we're picking the locations out right now, so you'll uh, you'll see some scenes from that. I'll put some snippets up soon, and um, you know, that's that's pretty much it. You know, like I said, shout out Sosa, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very excited for that, especially 
fucking with the Tracy tour or whatever, like if you're on that, like hopefully, because what what it is with either if you're fucking coming out on stage or if you're opening or anything of the sort like that, a lot of exposure and a lot of good publicity out of that. And hopefully yeah. I'm, I'm giving, I'm sending my good energy that you fucking, you know, you grow a lot when it comes to audience and shit like that. I'm only hoping for the best for Messi Santana. Damn right, gang. I appreciate it. You know, all love. All yes, love. sir. But um, no, yeah, I'm glad you shared that with us. And I'm I'm very excited because I'm watching. I follow you. You know, I'm here. Yeah. I'm watching. I, I also, keep up. I also, you know, I didn't speak on this. I have a collab tape coming out with uh I got a few collabs coming out too, but I got a collab tape coming out with uh emo shooter wavy boy. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I have not. Yeah, you check him out, man. Emo shooter, man, wavy boy. That's you a, know? that's the thing I like about this podcast. A lot of y'all put me on to different people and then I check it out and then it fucking brings me into a whole new world and opens more doors for this music shit. So definitely check it out. So we me and him got a collab tape coming out, you know, uh unstable creatures. So. Int- I fuck with that. I'm excited <laughs> for that now. <laughs> Any so. other like uh significant collaborators we got coming up or uh i got you know i i want to um no nah, i'm not gonna say that one i'm gonna leave that uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> matter of fact nah i don't know just know it's a big one other than other than tracy you gotcha. know, it's a big one. so it's it's a big one you you heard of them too all right so so um we'll go from there you know all right okay right. yeah all right well, let me give up the wrap up, which was this was the cult of ner- uh, la, la, la. whoa, 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 tongue twister. This was the <laughs> cult of personality podcast hosted by Mikey McChapa. With me today was Messi Santana, Messi Free. Thank fucking God. <laughs> and yeah, no, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for sitting with me for the last hour or so, especially with me trying to fucking troubleshoot my computer and shit. <laughs> you good, but, gang. Yeah, man. I'm thank you for thank you for coming on. You already know. Until next time. Until next time. All right. Peace and love. And we're good.